Hello and welcome to today's lesson where we're going to look at the properties of electromagnetic waves which is part of the waves topic in GCSE separate science physics. So in today's lesson we're going to look to understand the different properties of electromagnetic waves. So if we're successful and we learn in today's lesson we can define what an electromagnetic wave is, understand what the electromagnetic spectrum is and describe the uses of the different sections in the electromagnetic spectrum. So in today's lesson we're going to be covering the properties of electromagnetic waves too. Now the first wave we're going to look at in the electromagnetic spectrum is the radio wave. Now radio waves are used to transmit information around the earth to allow for communication communication. Now radio waves are transmitted across the earth via reflection off the ionosphere which is part of the atmosphere full of charged ions. So what happens is the radio waves are transmitted from a transmitter aerial, the radio waves are then deflected off the ionosphere and they are then received by the receiver aerials. Now actually this process is stronger in the winter months as the temperature is lower so it means the particles of the ionosphere are moving slower on average. So this makes the ionosphere denser and easier for the radio waves to reflect. Now this process can allow radio waves to be transmitted across many thousands of kilometers across the surface of the earth. Now radio waves are used to transmit information around the earth allowing for this communication. Now the radio waves are broadcast from a radio wave transmitter aerial and a transmitter aerial is a metal pole which is capable of carrying a current. So radio waves are broadcast from these particular transmitter aerials. So now a transmitter aerial like we said must be capable of carrying a current, which is the Droidworth transmission station here. Now, how it works is the transmitter aerial contains many free electrons because the aerial is made from a metal. So the radio waves are broadcast from this transmitter aerial and when you want the transmitter to transmit a radio wave you've got to pass an alternating current through the aerial and what this does is it causes the electrons in this aerial to move backwards and forwards at a frequency. So let's say for example this frequency was 30 hertz so the electrons would oscillate backwards and forwards 30 times every second. This causes the um, alternating current will cause the radio wave to be produced but this is the key idea. The radio wave produced has the same frequency as the frequency of the alternating current. So the alternating current had a frequency of 30 hertz, the radio wave would have a frequency of 30 hertz. So the radio wave must have the same frequency as the frequency of the alternating current but it also can work in the other, pro the other direction as well. So so let's say we've got a receiver aerial. So with a receiver aerial, the radio wave is absorbed by the aerial, and when the radio wave is absorbed by the aerial, this causes the energy, the energy of the wave which has been inputted into the aerial will cause the electrons in the aerial to oscillate. So they'll go backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, producing this alternating current. Now the frequency of the alternating current produced is the same as the frequency of the radio wave absorbed. So if we a 50 hertz radio wave being absorbed by the aerial that will produce an alternating current in the aerial of 50 hertz. So like we had before the same frequency of the radio wave equals the same is the same as the frequency of the, the aerial. So that's very, very important when we look at this process. So radio waves can be produced by oscillations in electrical circuits and alternating current. Now when radio waves are absorbed by an aerial, they may create an alternating current in the aerial. So in both cases, the frequency of the alternating current is equal to the frequency of the radio wave. Now electromagnetic waves can also be generated or absorbed when they interact with atoms. Now we know previously that electrons exist in shells or energy levels around an atom. Now when electrons move down energy levels they release an electromagnetic wave. This is because the lower energy level has less energy than the higher one so the electron needs less energy to exist on the lower level so it has excess energy from dropping down the levels which is given off as an electromagnetic wave. But the converse is also true as well. When electrons move up energy levels they do this by absorbing an electromagnetic wave. 
behave because the higher energy level has more energy than the lower one. So the electron needs more energy to exist on the higher level. So the electron gets this energy from absorbing an electromagnetic wave. But we can also produce an electromagnetic wave in the nucleus of an atom because an unstable nucleus can become stable by releasing a gamma wave as shown on this particular diagram. Now it's important to know that this topic of nuclear stability and the release of a gamma a wave was covered in atomic structure. So changes in atoms and nuclei of atom, uh, atoms can cause uh, the electromagnetic waves to be generated or absorbed over a wide frequency range. The electron arrangements may change with the absorption of electromagnetic radiation. It will move it further away from the nucleus to a higher energy level or by the emission of electromagnetic radiation move it closer to the nucleus a lower energy level but gamma rays can also originate from changes in the nucleus of an atom. Now radiation which is harmful to humans is called ionizing radiation. This is radiation which has so much energy that when it hits an atom it knocks the electrons out of the atom which we call ionization. So in this process the radiation will encounter an atom it will knock an electron out of the atom and turn it into an ion. Now when this radiation takes place as shown on this particular diagram and it takes place in the atoms of the DNA in our cells this can cause our DNA to be ionized. Now when this happens we say the DNA has been mutated. Now the mutation of DNA can lead to cancer in a person so it's important to note this idea that the the ionization of the atoms in DNA can cause a mutation which then leads to cancer. Now the chance of radiation leading to cancer is measured in a quantity called sieverts, a unit called sieverts. Now sieverts measures the risk of harm from an exposure of the body to radiation. Now a dose of one sievert gives a person a 5% chance of developing cancer. Now radiation which can do this includes gamma rays, x-rays, UV rays, which we call ionizing radiation. So ionizing radiation can either be nuclear radiation like alpha or beta or it could be electromagnetic waves UV or x-ray. Now gamma radiation is ionizing radiation which is both nuclear radiation and an electromagnetic wave. Now the chance of cancer or measured in sieverts is dependent on the type of radiation you're exposed to and the size of the radiation dose. The more ionizing the radiation, so for example gamma is more ionizing than UV, the greater the risk of cancer. The larger the dose of radiation, the greater the chance of cancer. So the greater the exposure to ionizing radiation, the greater the risk to the human being. So only the high energy regions of the electromagnetic spectrum are damaging to humans. Damaging radiation is called ionizing radiation. And ionization is when the DNA of cells is altered when the waves cause the electrons to be knocked off the atoms and change the DNA. The higher the frequency of a wave, the more energy it has, the greater the ionizing ability it has. And the damaging ability of radiation is measured in sieverts. Now examples of ionizing radiation include gamma, x-ray and UV rays. So what have we learned in this lesson? Radio waves can be produced by oscillations in electrical circuits. When radio waves are absorbed they may create an alternating current with the same frequency as the radio wave itself. So radio waves themselves induce oscillations in an electrical circuit. Changes in atoms and the nuclei of atoms can result in electromagnetic waves being generated or absorbed over a wide frequency range. Gamma rays originate from changes in the nucleus of an atom. Now ultraviolet waves, x-rays, gamma rays can have hazardous effects on human body tissue. The effects depend on the type of radiation and the size of dose. Radiation dose in sieverts is a measure of the risk of harm resulting from an exposure of the body to radiation, where a 1000 millisieverts is 1 sievert. And you should be able to draw conclusions from given data about the risks and consequences of exposure to radiation. Now remember, ultraviolet waves can cause skin to age prematurely and increase the risk of skin cancer, whilst x-rays and gamma rays are ionizing radiation that can cause the mutation of genes in cancer. So if we've been successful and we've learned in today's lesson, we should be able to look at what electromagnetic waves are, understand the different parts of the electromagnetic spectrum and describe the uses and the hazards of the electromagnetic spectrum. I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson looking at the properties of electromagnetic waves in GCSE separate science physics in the waves topic. Thank you very much and have a lovely day.